Today we are going to be creating some abstract looping animation and it's going to be a pretty interesting one so let's quickly get into it. So I'm gonna start off by taking a simple sphere and this is going to be my main element. So I'm gonna make this subdivision into a 40. And that's a good number to start off with. Uh, 40. And uh, what I'm gonna do is simply uh, apply two basically different materials to this. Uh, so because later on we are going to be pretty much duplicating the whole sphere. So it's better to shade this uh, right now or you can do it after it doesn't that much matter so i'm going to quickly assign new material style surface and i'm going to call this up and let's make this black and uh, what you can do is control shift i for invert and right click assign new material and let's another style surface and we can call this down right there you go so once you have this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the control D, right? And I'm going to hit X on my keyboard and just bring this up, right? I'm going to do one more time, control D, X and bring this up. All right, so we have something that looks like this. I'm going to select all of these spheres and simply hit control G to group them. And I'm going to call this spheres, right? Um, so that's pretty much it. And um, then let's uh, bring this right about here. All right. So once you're done with this, what you're going to do next is you basically create a simple surface that uh, these spheres can roll out on. So I'm going to take this cylinder as my base shape and let's maybe increase the radius to somewhere about maybe 6. And the height will be 1 and um, let's increase some caps and maybe a few segments for the height. Right. So when we hit 3, you'll get something like this. I'm going to just uh, build the whole edges here just to make them nice. And smooth, all right. And let's make increase in segments. And there you go. We have a nice uh, base here. And uh, finally, we need a flow. So I'm gonna make this plane. We don't need that many subdivisions for this guy. So let's call this flow. This will be our base, all right. Uh, so the key here is uh, we want to do some animation with this as a looping animation, right? So what we are going to do is uh, let me just adjust this. Uh, we are going to take a simple curve here, this one. Once taking the curve, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to scale this up to right about there, right? And I'm going to select this, the whole group, and shift select your overall uh, nerve curve here, and uh, go to animation, constraint, motion path, and attach to motion path. You'll notice uh, you get something like this, right? And I'm going to simply select my overall curve here and uh, bring this down to right about there all right so now when you uh, pretty much play this you'll notice that you get something like this right and uh, you can uh, you can't actually rotate that guy but if you go here to the motion path you can actually rotate this um, front twist as well so here you can do different kinds of uh, pretty much animations for the overall thing here, right? So I'm going to keep this to the negative 15 that is going to lean this whole thing down here. And I'm also going to cut this and uh, make this as a 90 seconds. So when we play this, right, I think the 90 second is a bit too, you can say fast. So I'm going to do a 150 and paste and let's see. Right, so there you go. Uh, now the problem here is, I'm going to make this timeline to about 500 so we can visualize this easily. Now the big problem here is that it's not completely looping. So to create a looping animation, all we have to do is, uh, we're going to select our group, go to our general, not our general, animation editor, graph editor. And uh, here you'll notice that this is the overall animation that we have. I'm going to select the whole thing. The first thing that we have to do is convert this animation from Bezier to a linear animation. What does that mean? It means when the animation begins, by default what Maya does is it creates a Bezier tangent which is basically slow, slowly starts and slowly ends as you can see the curve here. So when, if you notice correctly, the slowly starts and get into the speed, rolls out and then slows down at the end. So if you are looping something like this, it's not going to match up because we can clearly see the overall speed. So to convert this into a linear, what you can do is select your keyframes here and here you will find a straight uh, line. Uh, if you put your cursor on it, it will say linear tangent, just click on it and there you go. 
So when you play this now, it will begin in the same suite and it will end in the same suite. So now it's perfectly good to go for the looping. Now to do the loop, what you have to do is select your keyframes, uh, go to curve, post infinity and cycle. That's it. So from here when I play this after 150, you'll notice that it's completely looping. So now you're good to go. Now, uh, for the other animation that we have to do is, if you notice that we have the spheres, uh, obviously we have to animate them to look uh, like they are pretty much rolling on themselves as well. So to do that, what I'm going to do is here you have different types of animation, right? What you can do is you can select this uh, expression and uh, I'm going to just uh, make this window small. I'm going to copy this whole thing like this, control C, control V. Alright, and I'm going to hit equals to, and from here you can put in a expression called time, more multiplied by, uh, I'm going to give it a number of 20, and I'm going to see how's the overall speed, and then we can pretty much change it out. Um, I think it's a bit slow, but uh, we can always change, or I'm going to make this 40, edit, and uh, I think uh, I should go for a negative value. And maybe I should go for 80, negative 80 and edit. And let's see now. Right. Okay. So I think the overall speed is uh, maybe I'm going to go for the positive and maybe I'm going to go for a 100. Let's see. All right. This value is pretty good. So if you'll notice, we are only uh, putting an expression on the rotate x. Obviously, we want on the all. Uh, axis. So what we are going to do is we are going to again, oh, what you can do is copy this whole thing and hit enter, paste this whole thing and instead of X, just simply delete and put Y there, alright? And edit and it's um, it's going to pretty much give you the error. The reason is because you have not ended in statement. So put in um, the semicolon here and simply hit edit and there you go. So I'm going to do the same with the uh, Z axis. So I'm going to simply put in a rotate Z and uh, yeah there you go I'm just gonna randomize the whole thing instead of looking the same um, what I'm gonna do is put here 90 and maybe 17 here that will give us some randomization alright now you're good to go and now you have uh, animation that looks something that rolls out like this so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna do the same with this um, and uh, from here I can I'm gonna just uh, speed up the whole process and uh, I'm gonna see after that Alright, so I've pretty much expression, uh, my expression sheet is pretty much done and this is the overall animation that looks like. As you can see, it looks pretty interesting and it's perfectly looping and everything. So what I'm going to do next is I pretty much set up my overall uh, camera here. For, and I think the overall, uh, maybe this is too big, so I'm going to shrink this whole thing down. Alright, yeah. So let's go to create and I'm going to take my simple camera here and go to camera. There you go. And uh, before actually uh, zooming in, I'm just going to change my focal length to 120. Let's turn on the resolution gate here and from there we can uh, zoom out. Alright, so this looks pretty good. And uh, this is my overall scene here. So I'm just going to enlarge my overall plane. And I think now we are good to go. So I'm just gonna play this whole thing. Yeah, this looks good. I'm gonna lock my camera here. And let's call this camera main cam. Alright, so I'm just gonna quickly load in my HDR for the lighting purpose. So I'm gonna call this HDR and see you in a bit. Alright, so I've loaded in my HDR and let's see what uh, this looks like. And uh, yeah, so this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna quickly switch my uh, render to the GPU and uh, if you have a good GPU you should switch it too, it will just make everything a bit faster. Alright, from here uh, again you can start uh, diving into the whole shading process uh, from here. Uh, in my one of my last video I've done, uh, I think it was the mash roller, I've done a similar thing where we created two different materials and then we duplicated them uh, multiple times for uh, creating different spheres. So you can do that uh, pretty much to create an uh, interesting look or instead of using two different materials what you can do is also use the RAM method that we did for the last thing for example I'm going to go for stand surface 
and I'm going to call this year uh, one. Uh, since I uh, I've already used that technique in the last video, I didn't want it to repeat the whole thing, so I choose a different shading method, and this is my ramp. Right, so as you can see, it uh, creates a bit of a uh, radial look. So what you can do is select this to none, and select this to none, and make this 0.5. And uh, if you look at this now, it looks something like this. Uh, so there is a solution for that. But the reason I've chosen this type of shading is because for one, what you can do is you can create basically a copper shader, maybe, right? And uh, for the down part, you can go for something else, uh, else like uh, maybe a brushed metal. So you can do a different type of shading in them. Uh, it totally depends on what look uh, you're trying to give or what uh, you're going for. But yes, uh, you can go for something like this. Um, so that's it for pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video.